the reason I'm showing you this is not to make you all experts in anatomy. It's just so you understand why we're going to be doing the particular techniques we're doing. So the shoulder is a ball and socket joint. So what that means is obviously there's a ball, which is on the end of your arm bone there, and then the socket, which is actually part of your shoulder blade. Okay. The design of it is inherently unstable. What that means is there's actually not much of a socket that kind of keeps that ball in. You can see the socket's very shallow. And what that means is we're very reliant on the ligaments to keep the ball centered in the socket. If there's ever any damage to those ligaments through your arm being overstretched and so forth or falling on an outstretched arm, the shoulder's much more likely to be prone to subluxing or dislocating, which means that the ball will shift around the socket. That's probably the primary reason that we tape the glenohumeral joint. So the glenohumeral joint is named that because of the glenoid, which is the socket, and the humerus, which is the ball. Okay. So um, the most uh, common mechanism that people will feel unstable in their shoulder is if their arm is put into what we call abduction and external rotation, so like a stop sign position. And in those positions is when the ligaments are at their most lax and the ball is most likely to fall out. So the most common mechanism is they fall into um, an outstretched arm and it gets put up like that and they'll come off the field and it'll look like the ball's hanging out of the socket. Okay? Or they might get a similar incident and they just kind of get, come up with a dead arm and they feel like their arm's a bit unstable. Um, that's the other time that you would use this particular technique. But if this is our mechanism of you know, uh, so dislocation or instability, what, are we, what position do you think that we might need to be in to try and prevent it? Arm down, yep, cool. So we're going to be taping them into that position, okay? So um, with this particular technique, there's um, some anchors that go over the body and sometimes they are hard to stay on. I don't know if anyone who's taped shoulders have found it hard to get anchors to stay on the shoulders. But if you are to do that, probably the best thing is if you've got some of this uh, sort of, this is like 100 mil hyperfix, is it? Yep, 100 mil hyperfix and getting a really long anchor and that can help the anchors stick so they've got tape onto tape rather than um, tape onto skin, if that makes sense. So this tape's much more readily to stick in. So I sort of go just below the shoulder blade with this, down over the top and sort of down onto the chest. Okay, There's a bit of a base layer there. And if they're really uh, sensitive in their skin, you can also do that all around the rest of the shoulder. So it's a good thing if, if people are hypersensitive. So I then start with anchors. So whenever we're taping, it's always good to have an anchor point that the tape sticks to. Um, so rather than just the tape ending on the skin. So our anchor point in this instance is going to be straight over the top of this. And rip your tape. So broad anchors, good. Nice strong tape. Brilliant. And then what I'm going to get you to do there, actually put your hand on your hip by your little teapot. Perfect. And then we're going to do an anchor around their bicep. Um, what I need, what I would always get them to do is flex their bicep. So if you just sort of flex your bicep. Oh, you are. Standard joke. And it's a physio's prerogative, a trainer's prerogative, to always try and get at least two pairs from the armpit. I've got two, perfect. So, I mean, no, jokes aside, you probably just want to try and not get their hair there. So. so, the next thing we're going to do is just lay another strip down the side here. And this is kind of like a base layer that we're going to apply on. And if you... Watch what we're going to do now, just flex that bicep again. What we're going to do is just come around in a bit of a diagonal and apply that back across the front of the chest there. And just be careful how tight you pull that, because this is rigid tape, it's going around something, it can wind up really quickly. So I'm kind of just laying that on loosely. So you can do that either way, you sort of come down and around. And lock that off on there. Now, this is just sort of the beginning of it. So, apart from that anchor not quite sticking down completely, I probably would come down a touch more, or you can use like sticky spray, which is good to help the, the tape stick on. 
just if you start to move your shoulder out there, already you can feel it start to tighten up when you get to there. Great. So um, the final thing that we do with this one is to use some more of our EAB or elastic adhesive bandage or stretchy tape, another term for it. And it depends on the type, the size of the person's arms as to whether you'd use a 75 mil or the 50 mil version. So it's sort of a bit um, arbitrary depending on where you're coming from. But I actually might get you to stand up now if you don't mind standing next to me to the next end of the bed here. And what we're going to do is um, actually take this a little bit like you'd take a thumb. And for some people, they don't like this, but I'd recommend it as the best way to go if you can try and talk them into it. Okay, but what we're going to do is actually tape it around their chest, um, and it kind of makes the tape much more rigid in terms of um, uh, its stability on sticking on each other, and it's less likely to lift off. So start pretty much over the line of where you've done these um, other strips, those diagonal strips there. You can come around. And whenever you're doing stretchy tape, try to roll it off the tape before you apply it, rather than try and pull it off as you go, because you get it too tight, and it will constrict them. And then come across the front there. If they've, um, you might sort of, if you've got some sort of protection, you might actually sort of put it over their chest on the opposite side. Just lift your arm up there for me. In this case, I'm just going to wrap it around. There, and then you just keep going around. You basically use a whole roll of tape. Watch those hairs there again on the inside. If you were uh, doing a bilateral, like a Nick Day one or Dan Avery, would you still do the, the yep. cross over? Yep, I just end up with one each way. And that doesn't restrict it, so it's not going overhead. Uh, so, yeah, what we've talked about in a sec is the overhead. So, you do need to be careful about that because. If they're overhead markers, you don't want to restrict their ability to lift their arms up. This stuff will stretch a bit once you get going, but you also need to be aware that if they potentially, if they're having this tape, if they don't have it, they may not be that comfortable putting their arms above their head anyway. So just to make it neat, I'm just going to kind of finish around there so I can cover all that up. And I'll just snip the end off that daggy bit of the end of the tape roll. And then we just want to lock that off. Because um, whenever you use this EAB, it has a tendency to just catch and go like that. So you want to lock that off, no matter whether you're using a thigh or around a knee or an ankle or whatever. That's the end of my roll here. And just sort of flex that bicep there again for me. And so I'll probably just lock that off around there. Try not to get the creases in it, but it's always sports trainers are always finicky about getting creases in your tape, particularly if it's a TV game. <laughs> so, um, and then the last one is actually locking off here again. So, just when you do this one, it's probably actually best to get them up into that position as high as they can sort of go up there. And then this is sort of answering your question there, rather than lock them down, lock them up in elevation. So that they're. This will try to stop this all this tape riding up too far. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just going to do. And who thinks that's a lot of tape? Yeah. So come back down. So basically, what you've used is a whole roll of the EAB. So that might cost in the vicinity of four bucks, five bucks, maybe. Five dollars, yep. Um, and you've probably, I've only used a, a quarter of a roll of the rigid. But, you know, if this actually helps the player play a whole game, you know, that's the sort of stuff you hopefully try and budget for. Okay? The, the cut down version of this, if you're not happy to go all the way around, if the player's insistent that they're not, that you can kind of snip the EAB and attach it onto your anchors here and go do the similar principle. The principle being that they're in internal rotation and you're pulling it around the front so that when it comes to here, it winds up and the, the damage when they have this unstable shoulder is the front of the shoulder. So you're wanting that to tighten up when they come into this position.